Hey everyone, welcome back to Players Network Live. I'm Oliver Najad and we've got another special interview for you guys. And if you need to ask who my guest is, well then you, my friends, don't recognize these things. It is none other than 2004 World Series of Poker Champion, Mr. Greg Raymer. Greg, what's going on, buddy? How are you? I'm doing wonderful things. Everything's going on. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, right? What's not going on? Really, exactly. tell me about that. I mean, ever since you won it, it's just been a whirlwind, right? It has. I'm on the road 80% of the time. I uh, travel all over the place. I'm playing in all the big poker tournaments, World Poker Tour events, World Series circuit events here in Vegas, uh, all over the European Poker Tour. Does it ever just get to be too much? Are you ever just overwhelmed and you're like, God, I wish I could go home, kick off my shoes, you know what I mean, pull an well, Al Bundy and just, you know, be a couch potato? Well, I mean, it's not that it's too much. I would like to spend more time at home just because, you know, I have a wife, I have an eight-year-old daughter. They can't travel with me year-round because my daughter's in school. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I'd like to spend more time with them, but it's not really too, it's not that it's too much. Is your wife into poker? Is she, does she come and watch on occasion? Oh, yeah. She spent, uh, like, the last two-thirds of the day on day one sitting, oh, the outside the, yeah, sitting outside the final table watching me play. Now, how's it been for you and the family? I mean, when you go out, I mean, you're instantly recognizable, Greg. It, it oh, doesn't yeah. take the glasses. I mean, people look at you, and they're just like, that's the guy. That's the guy oh, I saw yeah. on ESPN well, a million I, times What I over. frequently hear, I mean, I'm at the stop and shop, pushing the cart, right. you know, buying bananas and Campbell's soup, uh -huh. you know, and some guy is like, you know, hey, dude, where are the glasses? That's all they want. And it's like, you, you think I'm wearing the glasses at the stop and shop? You know? I mean, you don't, you don't expect to see this going down the aisles. You got, now, that would be begging for attention. I'm telling you, where did these things come from? I remember before we'd met uh, on some of the different shows, I, I was watching, turned on the tube, and I'm going, what does this guy think? Where are these glasses coming from? What's the story behind well, these things? Fill me in. Okay. So 2002, I played the main event for the very first time. Okay. And I'm on vacation with my family at Disney World right beforehand. And I see these in the Tower of Terror gift shop. <laughs> and I think this would be really funny. You know, I didn't really wear sunglasses when I played. I never wore sunglasses when I played poker. And I thought this would be amusing to put these on in the middle of a big hand. So I'm playing a pot, you know, like the second or third level against a guy. And I raise him after the flop. And he's doing the chip count thing. He's counting out the raise that I just made on him. And he's counting out how many chips he'll have left. And he's paying no attention to me. So I slip these out, put them on. And I just sit there and just stare at him, waiting for him to look up. It's so hard to take you seriously with those freaking things. Well, I'm expecting everyone just to bust out laughing. You know, but was I, it just and, and it was, it was meant as a one-time gag. But no one else was doing anything. I thought they'd start giggling, and then he'd look up, and we'd all laugh. Did anyone giggle? No one did a thing. And then, you know, 30, 40 seconds later, he finally finishes his own little introspection. And he looks up at me, and he just... You know, almost knocks his chair over backwards. He's so freaked out. And he's just like, you know, what the bleep is going on? Who is this bleep bleep, you know? And, no and kidding. Then, and then he, he was angry? Well, he wasn't angry. He was just like literally freaked out. Wow. And then finally he just grabbed his cards, threw them to the dealer, and he's like, I don't even know what to think. What? And, uh, and so I thought, well, wait they a second. Maybe I'm not going to just use this as a one-time gag. What kind of advice can you give to everybody out there who aspires to be a poker professional and perhaps one day yeah. a champion like yourself? Well, the first piece of advice is you never gamble with money you can't afford to lose. And the second piece of advice follows from that. You win your way up. You know, even if you have a, a sufficient income, um, sufficient, you know, personal wealth from a to play a high-stakes game, you know, you, you shouldn't, you know, you don't come into the poker world and start playing in the 100, 200 game. Um, I mean, maybe Although, if, you're Bill, if you're Bill Gates, maybe, you know, because right. even then you're not going to notice the loss. Mm -hmm. But if, if you're a guy who has a good living, you know, you make 100, 150,000 a year, if you jump into the 100, 200 game, you are going to notice the loss. Right. It's going to add up to several tens of thousands pretty quick if you're a beginner. If you're uh, now, you play online as well, right? I mean, a, oh, yeah. a lot of people who we've had on the show have discussed how playing online has enabled them to get a wealth of experience in a short amount of time. Sure. Uh, I mean, when you're giving advice out there, you've, you've given some tips out already, what can you tell them about online poker? What should they be doing there? Where should they be looking? What should they get involved in? Well, in many ways, it's the same advice. You know, you don't gamble with money you can't afford to lose, and you win your way up. The really nice thing about online poker is that even if you don't have hardly any money to speak of, you know, you could be the poor starving student and you could win your way up on the internet. Dollar satellites and you got a seat at the main event. Exactly. You can, you can win your way here for a for dollar or three dollars or even just for free on the frequent player points. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know how to play poker, you can go online. You know, we have play money games at PokerStars. 
So you can just sit there and you can learn the basics, the fundamentals of Hold'em, how to read the board, you know, the betting and raising patterns, all that kind of stuff, and you can't risk, a, you don't have to risk a penny. And then when you're ready to play, you can move up to the penny games. Right. You know, like there's one and Literally two. Literally penny games. Literally penny, one and two penny blinds, no limit Hold'em. I think wow. it's either a one or two dollar maximum buy-in. <laughs> so uh, that's you know, just like we used to play, but we used to actually use pennies back well, exactly. on the living room floor. Is there a question that you're getting a lot via the cider when you're up, up, you know, out at the World Series and stuff like that that you want to answer here? I mean, is there something you well, get a lot other than the glasses and the fossils and stuff? Well, I think the funniest thing is, is you know, this is the poker world. So people always will say things to me like, boy, Greg, I, I can't even imagine how many times you've been hit up for a loan in the last year. <laughs> you know, because everyone knows Absolutely. there's always poker players that are short on funds looking for money. Yeah. And I say to them, you know, the funny thing is that hardly ever happens. I mean, literally in the last year, I haven't had more than half a dozen people who have asked me for money. But I've had at least three dozen people who have asked me to help them with some invention because they see that I was a patent attorney before I won the main event. You were a patent attorney? Biotech patent attorney. My goodness. So people come up to me and they're like, you know, I have this idea for a new poker game. I have this idea for something that has nothing to do with poker, but you're a patent attorney. And hey, I, I heard you quit your job, so you probably have plenty of time. You have quit your job? You're no longer a biotech patent attorney Correct. at all? Correct. I used to work for Pfizer, and that's why I lived near Foxwoods. Uh, I see. Pfizer has a big research facility in Groton, Connecticut, and I was one of a couple dozen patent attorneys. So poker was just kind of a hobby while you were working and then you all of a sudden turned well, it into your profession? It was a, it was a second job for me. I mean, I filed Always. my taxes as a self-employed, part-time professional poker player. Wow. So I had my you know, regular income from my job and then I had the other income on Schedule C and part-time professional, which is difficult. The IRS doesn't like part-time no, professional no. gamblers. Do you, uh, do you miss work? No, I don't. No. Don't even bat an eyelash, huh? No, nope, not But you a do miss the time you were able to spend with your family. No exactly. Right? I mean, that's the only day. I mean, it'd be nice if all the big tournaments just came to Foxwoods. And then I'd have a little six-mile <laughs> drive back and forth to every we big event. We should all be so lucky. Well, you know, I mean, we're, we're thinking of relocating someplace because my wife would like to avoid winter. <laughs> so we're, we're considering various possibilities. Vegas. Well, you know, we have an eight-year-old daughter, and as much as I like Vegas, Dangerous. I don't think it's really the best place to raise kids. <laughs> Not the most wholesome I mean, of cities. You know, back home in, in, in Stonington, Connecticut, we don't have, like, the city bus drive down the street with a picture of a stripper on the side, you know? <laughs> right, um, it's like know. a bagel and lox or something. Exactly. Like you know, or an Amish buggy goes Starbucks by. coffee, you know, or whatever. I mean, it's, it's, it's the very routine stuff. Uh, right, right. You know, if you don't like corporate America, you won't like it, but you got that everywhere you go. But... You know, we don't have the, the scantily clad showgirl, you know, <laughs> advertising the uh, semi-nude after-hours show at the Stardust or hey, something. Hey, but that's why we all come over here for that sort of escape. That's why you come to Vegas. Exactly. It's not why you bring your, your kids to Vegas. No, so, no. Uh, But, it, I mean, it's good to hear that you got the house out here. It's good to hear that the family came out to visit you. And it's oh, yeah. always great to have you as a, as a guest, Greg. Uh, well, thanks, it's been a Alan. pleasure getting to know you over the last few months. And uh, thanks for joining us here today. My pleasure. All right, you guys. Uh, Oliver Najad here, Greg Raymer. He's been our guest. We thank you for having him. We thank you guys for joining us. And uh, stay close, Players Network. We've got some more interviews coming up. See you in a bit. I like a little slick. That's Deuce 3 Offsuit. I started naming every hand. The Octo Crabs 8 3 Offsuit. I had a guy one night that said he'd play any name hand. All of a sudden, every hand had a name. I, I named a lot of hands. Probably didn't have names prior to that night. I, I, I'm not sure I can repeat them. I mean, everyone refers to Ace King as the big slick, and 6 9 is the big lick. We've all heard that one, I'm sure. I suppose that one rank at the top of the goofiest ones. The two kings are called the butchers of Baghdad. I think it suits the times. Actually, we do have one in the Borgata specifically. It's called the Mexican. And it's the 6-9 of clubs, but it has to be specifically of clubs. And it's um, named after a guy that we play with. His name is Agustin Mendez. And he played this hand so poorly and just ended up winning his huge pot. Now everyone plays it. So it's fantastic. But we call it the Mexican because he's Mexican. This is Chris Ferguson, and you're watching the Players Network. First game, probably, well, it's stud or ace to five or stud eight or better. If I ever made the money in a stud event, it would make a mockery of the game. <laughs> it's my worst game. I would say Omaha. Omaha, high low split. But, but I'm actually I've been playing that a lot more too, so. But I would say that game. Omaha eight or better. 
And I'm not playing those. Because I'm not stupid. <laughs> My worst game, I would say, is maybe Omaha Pot Limit, but I cashed an Omaha Pot Limit as well, so go figure. My worst game, remarkably and tragically, is Hold'em. And Hold'em is what we televise 95% of the time. I'm an underdog in Hold'em if I'm playing in nine Franciscan monks. I, I shouldn't be analyzing, I shouldn't be playing it, but, you know, there's worse lots in life, so I have to talk about it all the time, so instead of analyzing it, I just try to be entertaining about it. I'm not telling anybody what my worst game is, man. Are you crazy? <laughs> I'm Mike Mizrachi. They call me the grinder. And you're watching the Players Network. It's surreal to begin with. Um, I didn't get into poker because I wanted to be on TV. I got into poker because I, I was a gambler. I was a hustler. In some sense, it hasn't really changed much at all. I mean, I have more money, you know, and things are easier, and I don't have as many worries. But my average day is the same as it was. Sit around and play poker all day and sleep. I don't think that I've changed a lot or that I'm over aggressive with it. I just. I kind of take it with a grain of salt, but have fun with it and say hi to everybody. I'm not recognized anywhere else, but when I go to a casino, a tournament or something, you know, people know who I am, so it's kind of weird. You know, my daily life is the same. I mean, my future is better and I'm more well off and I can take care of my family and things, but my everyday life is the same. I wake up, go to the poker tournament, have the same complaints, you know, and everything's the same. Sometimes I just want to be, you know, anonymous, hat down or something, and shrink away to the sidelines. <laughs> I'm Eric Seidel and you're watching the Players Network. <laughs>